you very much. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord bless you. Revive you. And make the work of your hand prosper in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you at this time and bless your name. A great God, a mighty God, powerful God, wonder-working God. We pray your work in every life and raise your people up to more than they can be in Jesus' name. In our own strength, what can we do? In your strength, we can do all things you have appointed for us to do. Bless us here. Bless your people, your ministers everywhere. And we pray, Lord, there will be unforgettable touch and transformation in every life and every ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. As they say, it's thunderous. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Today, as we are coming in, and we're looking at the scriptures, leaning on the Spirit of God, that we will have strength, might, power, sustenance for the fainting minister. I pray the Lord will touch every life and turn you around in Jesus' name. Think about that. Strength. Supernatural strength. Spiritual strength for the fainting minister. You might think, I'm not fainting, but you know, it might have happened in the past. It happened to Moses. It may be happening in the present. It happened to Elijah. It might happen, who knows, in the future. And whenever it happens, if it so happens again, that there is any fainting in our heart, in our mind, on our steps, in our personality, as we minister and as we do the will of God, the work of God, anywhere we are, the Lord will strengthen you. Amen. The Lord will lift you up. And any effect of the fainting of the past, the Lord will remove it in Jesus' name. This first message we're looking at, seeking and receiving the Spirit's strength for ministry. The strength of the Spirit that we need, that we need to receive for the ministry and for the calling of God upon our lives. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40 and I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord. Many, many times when we read the scriptures, we do not remember is the God of the past, the God of the present, and the God of the future. He is the everlasting inner God. As he was with the ministers of the past, as he was with the servants of God in the past, so he is today, and so he will ever be. You know why? the everlasting in God and his attributes are everlasting his strength is everlasting his health is everlasting his promises are everlasting the faithfulness of that God we're talking about he is, is everlasting have you not known and have you not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth think about that he can recreate whatever needs to be created in your life in my life, in your family, in your ministry, because he's the creator of the whole earth. All the stars and all the sun and all the moon and all the galaxies and everything you might read about in the universe. He made them all. If he made them all, whatever needs to be made again, created in your life, he will do it even today. He will do it in his power. He will do it in his authority. Because that is what he has promised. And he says, the creator of the ends of the earth, it says, there is no searching 
of his understanding. He fainted not. I want you to underline that. He fainted not. Humans might fail. People might fail. And the people of this world, you know, the pressure might be so much upon you that you faint. But the God we serve and the God that called us and the God who has put us on the path of ministry, he Fainted not. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it tells us he giveth power to the faith. Do you realize in verse 28, the word faith is there. And it's referring to the God who created or the God who is everlasting. Now, it's referring to us in verse 29. And it says he giveth power. Not that he gave. Not that he will give in the future, even today at the point of your need. Even today at the point when you feel the pressure, when you feel the pain, and when you go through the problem. It says, even today, he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Strength is coming. For me. For me. For me, it, for you, it's coming uh, in Jesus' name. Have you noticed? Fainteth not in verse 28. And then in verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. Look at verse 30 here. It says in verse 30, even the youths shall faint and be weary. The word faint again comes up. It says, even the youth, the youth that are naturally, they're still fresh in life. They've not climbed many mountains in life, and they have not gone through fire or storm or flame, and they still come with their original strength, and normally they should be strong. But it says, even those youths, when they face life, even those years when life impacts on them. He says, even those years in their natural strength. Maybe he's talking about you, and there you feel strong. I'm still a youth. I can run any distance. I can climb any mountain. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Notice again the word faint. In verse 28, in verse 29, now in verse 30, but now verse 31. In verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord, that's what we're doing now. We leave every other thing, and we even try to switch off our phone so that we can wait, wait. Wait only on the Lord. And the way our hearts, our minds, and our lives agitate, we say, calm down, cool down, rest, and relax. All the activities that normally take our attention, we say, now you go aside. I want you relax in the presence of the Lord. I want to rest in the presence of the Lord. I want to give attention. I've been giving attention to the needs of the body. When I work, when I eat, when I drink, when I sleep, all those activities, when I run here and there, when I'm about my business, that's all about attention to the body. But now, I say, I need to minister to my soul and to my spirit. I want to have my spirit and my soul come before the Lord so that there will be a restoration, so that there will be a recreation. And so they that wait upon the Lord. Uh, you know, if, if you come in here and you're still sending texts and sending chat, if you come in here and while the message is going on, while the prayer is going on, you're still trying to do business. You're still doing this and doing that and giving that control and that command. You are not waiting upon 
the Lord. When you wait upon the Lord, you brush everything aside. You clear your plate, you clear your table, you clear your mind, you clear your heart. And it's such people that concentrate, it's such people that look up to the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It will renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. The reason why we wait on the Lord is that there is still a mountain to climb. There is still a field to reap. There is still a place to go. And there is still ministry to perform. And we want to be able to mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. If you run in your own strength alone, the time comes, you're weary. If you run by the encouragement of people alone, the time comes, you're weary. If you run with the old vision, old passion, old faith, and the old determination, that time comes in your life when all those old things cannot carry you on. But when you run in the strength of the Lord, in the strength of the Spirit of God, it says they will run and not be weary. Look at the word faint again. They shall walk and not faint. They shall walk and not faint. God must have a good reason to keep that word faint or fainted. Not fainting. He has a good reason for keeping that word in every verse there. And the secret is wait upon the Lord. And then as we're waiting upon the Lord, you're seeking to receive the strength of the Spirit for your ministry. When you king at that word wait, the command to wait. The calling to wait. The consequence of waiting and what you have, your possession as you wait. The anointing of the Spirit, that's number one. What we are waiting for. If we're going to be strong in ministry, strong in the heart, and strong in the mind, and strong against any problem, anything that confronts you in life or ministry. What we need is the strength of the Spirit. And in waiting, waiting in prayer to receive that strength, to receive that power. Number one is the anointing of the Spirit. The anointing spirit. That's what you are waiting for. And we we'll wait until that new anointing comes. And when that new anointing comes in your life, every yoke will be broken. Yeah. Internal yoke will be broken. External yoke will be broken. And the yoke you've been battling with and struggling, it may be this time. As we wait upon the Lord, all that yoke will be cleared off in your life in Jesus' name. The spirit strength, how does it come? It will have the anointing spirit. In First John chapter 2, reading here from verse 27, it says, But the anointing which ye have received abideth in you. That's the secret. The secret of not becoming weary. The secret of not becoming tired. The secret of not fainting. The secret of not being fearful. The fainting man is a fearful man. The secret of not being fretful. The fainting man is 
a fretful man. He worries a lot. He worries about this and worries about that. He worries about what people will say, what people will do. He worries about, you know, the king makers, those who put him there, used by God. He worries, what do they think about me? What am I doing here? He worries about the fruitfulness on the field. Am I fruitful? Am I not fruitful? The fainting man is a fearful man. The fainting man is a fretful man. The fainting man is a fatigued, tired, worn out man. It's like, can I take another step? Can I move another direction? Can I climb? A new mountain, can I do that revealed ministry that the Lord is revealing unto me because he is uh, fainting the faithless man, a faithless minister. I could have done that 20 years ago, but now, 20 years after, what can I do? I could have done that when I had everybody clapping, everybody cheering, everybody applauding, saying you are doing well, you are doing well. But now, all those uh, cheer people, all those people that you kind of got me on, I can't see them because of that is fainting. A fainting man then is a faithless man. He takes his faith away from God and he puts his faith upon man. And when the help is not coming from man, the fellow is down. But then if the anointing abides, if the anointing remains, you'll not be so tired and say, I go a fishing. If the abiding spirit comes back again, you will not uh, pull other people. They say, okay, if he, Peter, can go a fishing, what am I doing? Let's follow him. You'll not pick up your old net. When the abiding spirit abides in you, it says, <clears throat> it says, the anointing which ye have received which ye have received you know when we're born again the spirit bears witness that we are children of God. When we are sanctified, the Spirit also bears witness that the Adamic nature, that the inbred sin, that the inner depravity is dealt with. And when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, power comes, strength comes, anointing comes. And when you have been having the anointing of the Spirit, you have been having the enablement of the spirit. Fainting will vanish away. That's why we're waiting in prayer that we might have the abiding anointing spirit. It says, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not any man to teach you what that means is to prop you up and every time saying brother get up now brother go to church now sister why don't you do what the lord has called you to do the voice is there the calling is there but you are sitting down here you're considering something something other than your calling something other than your ministry because of that the anointing is winning the anointing is subsiding but it says when the anointing abides and when the anointing comes back you do not have any man the need of any man to teach you about at the same anointing teaches you before we talk the anointing of the spirit the spirit who anoints you is talking already before we say get up the spirit is saying get up before we say that's enough now you've been resting for some days you've been resting for some weeks why don't you get up now the anointing teaches you and it says it teaches you all things and it's truth 
And it says, and is no lie. It says, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. I will abide. You, you know, people ask how is it? You've been ministering for 10 years and you still abide in ministry and you still have the same excitement, the same drive, the same purpose, the same goal. How is it after ministering for like, you know, 20 years, 25 years, you're still on the go and you're still on the drive because the anointing spirit abides. And today you open your heart again. And the anointing spirit will come in afresh in your life in Jesus' name. And when that anointing spirit comes in and abides, he'll teach you where to go, when to go, how to go, and the resources you need, he'll provide in Jesus' name. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I wanted an amen. Yeah. What if we don't abide? What if the spirit, the anointing doesn't abide? What if we're empty of the anointing? What if we're deprived of the anointing? No, what if because of not using the anointing then the anointing is withdrawn because what you don't use, you lose. What if we lose the anointing? What if all that remains in us is just the flesh? The soul is not alive. The spirit is not alive. And only the flesh, I mean, we may carry on in ministry, but only with the energy of the flesh. The energy of the human. What if Christ comes and there is no spirit of God in us? And all we do, we do by the energy of the flesh, by the drive of the flesh. Where will we be when he comes? Little children now abide in him. That when he shall appear. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, we're seeking to receive the anointing spirit. I pray a fresh anointing will come upon you. A new anointing will come upon you. And, and you know, when you first received the anointing spirit, you know, you remember how you wake up in the night, pray. You remember how things of the future re is revealed unto you. You remember how you were not taken by surprise about anything because you just received the anointing. But now time have come and gone. Things have waned. Things have gone down and we only eat the manner of last week. And it's, you know, it's almost a breeding worms, but that's all we have. But when at the present a new anointing comes, that anointing fresh and new will do great things through your life in Jesus' name. In Isaiah Chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah. Chapter 10, verse 27, the last part there, it says, And the yoke 
shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke, any yoke in your life, any pressure upon your life, any chain around you, any things that ties your mind that the mind cannot sink again, anything that ties the spirit and the spirit cannot move again, anything that pins you down, the yoke is this new anointing, is this fresh anointing, it will break every yoke out of your life. Break the yoke in your family and break the yoke in your ministry in Jesus' name. That's why we wait upon the Lord because they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. The anointing in them will be renewed. Let's come to be here. Be is the blessed spirit. In the baptizing spirit, in the burning spirit, the spirit that burns every chaff out of your life, the spirit that comes to bless you, and the spirit that makes you a blessing to other people, the blessed spirit, the burning spirit, and the baptizing spirit. In Matthew chapter 3, <clears throat> we're looking at chapter 3, of Matthew verse 11. Here it says, I, this John talking, I, this John the baptizer talking, I, this John the baptist, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. John. How do you do that? How do you baptize the people in water unto repentance? And John says, they come to me. And when they come, I am to baptize them in water. And to dip them, immerse them in water. Some of them are taller than I am. Some of them are bigger and heftier than I am. Some of them have muscles than I, more than I have. But they surrender their bodies so that I can lower them into the water. They don't struggle. They just come and all their strength, all their body, everything, they surrender and I easily baptize them, dip them into water. And I don't stop until they're totally submerged inside the water. And he says, in the same way, then there's someone here that comes after me and is mightier than I. In fact, his shoes I cannot bear. I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. How will he do that? Like I do that in water baptism. They come, they surrender themselves. When we want to have that blessed spirit, the burning spirit that burns every child out of our lives, we come unto him. We come to him for salvation. We come to him for sanctification. Uh -uh. Where did you see that? Because we're going to be baptized into the Holy Spirit. And it's not baptizing our body into water. It's baptizing our spirit. And because he is holy, he wants the holiness to prepare the way that the Holy Spirit will come upon us in a baptismal measure. And it will come. Yeah. What if I'm still lying? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will say, can you take that off of the way before I come and fill you up 
What if we're still having the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit is not even there yet? He says, can you take that out of the way so that I can come and be the blessed spirit and the burning spirit and the baptizing spirit in your life? And if we're seeking him, if we are waiting on him, everything that will hinder, everything that will diminish, everything that will uh, stop the coming in of the Holy Ghost will take all that away. And then there's a free way. And then there's the highway of holiness. And the Holy Ghost will come in a greater measure than you ever expected in your life in Jesus' name. He says he shall baptize you. What does that mean? It will take your whole personality, your heart to start with, your soul, then your body, and it will dip you, immerse you into the ocean of the Holy Ghost. It will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Somebody says, and with fire. Somebody shouts, and with fire. You know, you come across people that will say, I am baptized in the Holy Ghost. I say, what's your evidence? Then they say, let me show you. And the tongues they spoke, excuse me, 10 years ago, they repeat that. The tongues they spoke, the new language they spoke 30 years ago, they repeat that. I say, yes, I've heard you. Well, I'm looking for the fire. I'm looking for the fervency. I'm looking for the fairy spirit of God abiding in you. Tongues, but there's no fire. Did you see Acts chapter 2? As they were sitting, the Holy Ghost came upon them and tongues like as of fire came upon them. The fire must burn. And look at those disciples that received the Holy Ghost. And the fire came with it. All the useless things they used to think about. I am first and you are second. I am in the front and you are the back. The fire burnt that up. And all the remembrance of their names. I go a fishing after the fire of the Holy Ghost came. Even the thought of picking up the, the nets again, the temptation was burnt up. And all the, I'm tired today, I cannot go out today. You know what happened? You see those people that, as you know, the lame was healed in chapter 3. They laid hands on us in chapter 4 of us. And guess what they did? They threatened us. They said, if you ever speak in that name again, see what will happen. And they didn't sit down because of that. They said, we must speak what we have heard of the Lord. Where is the old discouragement? The fire had burnt it up. Where is the old pride? I'm greater than you are. I want to be on this side and you'll be on that side. The fire had burnt it up. And when the Holy Ghost comes in our lives and it becomes the blessed spirit, the burning spirit and the baptizing spirit, all child will be born away from every life in Jesus' name. And uh, 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 did you see, did you see, uh, they had gone out to heal the sick in uh, Matthew chapter 10, in Mark, chap in uh, Luke chapter 9, uh, and Luke chapter 10. And now the same healing is going to take place, but now the old rot, the old method, this is the way we always do it 
all that is burnt up. And I see John and Peter coming to the temple at the hour of prayer. And they had not even reached the place of prayer, but prayer had been stored inside them. And the Spirit of God did not allow the prayer that had been stored inside them to evaporate. And as they were at the gate, remember they had not gone to the place of prayer yet, they were still on their way. And they saw that man, and they said, Peter did not say, John, you see now, if we had fasted yesterday, we'll be able to do something now. You know, if we had come earlier to this place of prayer, would have been able to do something. No, no, no. Because they were blessed, they were uh, they were born by the body spirit, and the baptizing spirit was upon them. They got there, and Peter stopped, and John stopped. And they looked on the man, and they said, Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? Peter, what are you going to do now? Are you not afraid? What if you say this and nothing happened? The old fear had been burnt up. The old fear will be burnt up in your life. The old shame, what will people think if you say publicly here at the gate and everybody is going and coming, stand up. And the man is said, you think I'm a fool? I've been like this for 40 years. And instead of giving me arms, he said, stand up, come on. If you don't have money, go your way. He said, silver and gold have I none. But I have something greater. I have something greater. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. If you put as much strength, as much drive, as much time, you give in seeking money, in seeking silver and gold, if you put as much time, as much energy, as much intelligence, as much planning as you do, looking for money, and now you put all that strength in seeking for the powerful baptism in the Holy Ghost. In no time, you become another man. Yeah. You become another woman. Yeah. And so silver and gold have I none, but what I have, what I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man was dazed. He was looking around. And then Peter, Peter was so sure the ankle will receive strength. The joints will receive strength. He was so sure that all that impotence of 40 years will vanish away. He gave him his hand, lifted him up, and the man jumped, and the man walked, and the man ran after them. He's coming back again. Yeah. When we have that baptism of the Spirit that comes with the Holy Ghost and with Fire. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. As the floor of my heart been purged, thoroughly purged, as the floor of my life purged, Thoroughly put, uh, uh, we we'll we'll sweep our room, our chamber every day. And even though we sweat it yesterday, as we speak, as, as we're sweeping today, look at everything that collects, and we have to collect the dirt. Where did they come from? What if for one week you don't sweep? One month. You don't sweep. One year, you don't even sweep at all. You are just there in our lives, purging. You see, taking place every day. The sweeping up of all those things that collect 
Is he being purged every day? Or do we just say, I am saved, I am saved. The building is good, but we have to sweep it every day. The chamber is good, we have to sweep it every day. The heart has been converted, consecrated to the Lord. There's a purging that takes place every day. The Spirit of God comes, and then the fire comes, and he thoroughly purges his floor. And he says, he gathers the wheat into the garner, but it will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. The chaff is not poisonous, but it's not nourishing. There are many things in our lives, they're not sinful, they're not poisonous, they're not bad in quotes, but they hinder productivity, they hinder usefulness, they hinder spiritual strength. And the child, although not sinful, the child, although not totally Something will say he's not a believer because he has the chaff in his life. Yet, the must be bunch of every time. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. The spirit we seek is the abiding, anointing spirit. B. The spirit we are seeking is the blessed, burning, Baptizing spirit. See now, the spirit was seeking uh, the comforting and the convicting spirit. We look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever i will pray the father the father is concerned and connected with this i jesus christ is concerned and passionate about this that he will send another comforter that word another Another in Greek of the same kind. I've been comforting you. I've been caring for you. I've been cultivating you. And I'm going away. Who cultivates your life now? Who improves your life now? Who cares for your life now? Who comforts you in any trial, in any problem you have now? I. Well, pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He'll care for you. He'll cultivate your life that he may abide with you forever. In verse 17, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. The people who walk by what they see, when I see, I'll believe. They're still like the world. The people who walk by feeling, I feel it. They're not walking by faith. I walk by what I feel. They are like the world. The people who are walking by sight, they are not walking in the spirit, by the revelation of the spirit. They are still like the world. But it says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it says him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. That's happening already. He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. You see the difference there? Jesus said, disciples, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
they were born again. He said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. They were sanctified. But they had not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. They said, He dwelleth with you. Is with you. He talks to you. You can hear his voice, maybe from behind. You can hear the small, still voice around you. He dwelleth with you. When we are saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. In a born again measure. Born of the Spirit. When we are sanctified, he comes in more. Blessed by the Spirit. And now, when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, when we're immersed in the Holy Ghost, the Comforter now dwells in us. He shall be in you. If you don't make the difference that Christ has made, you'll be thinking, I'm born again, I've got it all. You'll be thinking, I'm sanctified, I've got it all. What Pentecost am I waiting for? What baptism am I waiting for? I sense the Spirit. I see the Spirit. I know the Spirit is with me. Yes, but He shall be in you. One is done now, and the other is still to be done. He will do it in your life. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He is the comforting spirit. He is the caring spirit. He is the cultivating spirit that cultivates your life, cultivates your ministry. And you move from good to better, from better to best. And your life will not remain at the same level anymore in Jesus' name. Am I not concerned when my prayer life remains at the same level as it had been for 40, 45 years. There should be concern. Am I not concerned when my discernment is just like it was like 30 years ago and there's no growth and there's no upward climb? You should be concerned. I should be concerned. But when the comfort of the Spirit, when the caring of the Spirit, when the cultivation of the Spirit is on the increase in my life, then I'm happy. I know that the Comforter has taken his seat. He will do that in every life. It says in verse 26, but the Comforter, that the comforter, verse 20, in verse 26, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. Those disciples were taught all things when the Spirit came, that the gentle and the Jew will be in the same family of God. All things. That the second coming of the Lord, yes, there, they knew that in Matthew chapter 24. But the rapture will take place. They did know that in, um, you know, in uh, Matthew chapter 24. That's why they were asking, will you at this time uh, bring the kingdom back unto Israel? Did he think of the rapture? But the Spirit, when he comes, he'll teach you all things. And how many people are still being taught by the Spirit of God? And any time they come into any fellowship like this, if they hear something they never had before, they say, I never had that before. I never believed that before. So how can I believe that now when the Spirit comes in? It will teach you all things. Amen and amen. amen. And then it says, it will guide you and bring to remembrance all things whatsoever 
I've said unto you, when we have the Spirit of God, it's good enough we're taking notes and we're writing. And that's very good. But when the Spirit of God comes, He reminds us. He brings to remembrance at the time of temptation the word we have learned that will give us victory. He brings to our mind at that time. When trial comes, when difficulties come, the words we have learned at the time of sitting like this, at the appropriate time, the Spirit of God brings everything back to our remembrance. As ministers, when we're preaching, when we're ministering, and we need a word which we didn't, you know, put on our outline, the Spirit of God will bring to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you, the Lord affirm, confirm that in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at verse 27. In verse 27, peace, I live with you. Amen. Peace, I live with you. There are times when you have the ministry. Something happens from the right, from the left, from the back, from the inside. Confusion comes. Am I doing it right? Am I going the right direction? Am I in the middle, at the center of the will of God? When the Spirit abides, it brings abiding peace in your life. Perfect peace in your life, personal peace, whatever commotion outside, when you have that spirit, the comforting spirit, the caring spirit, and the cultivating spirit that cultivates your spiritual life. Your peace, nothing will take away. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. If your heart is troubled, you allow your heart to run away from you. You're not in control. Your heart is troubled. You're looking at something you shouldn't be looking at. You're looking at the storm, not at the spirit. You're looking at the confusion, not at the comforter. Let not your heart be troubled. You are the one to say, heart, remain in Christ. Abide in Christ. No trouble. Because the triumphant one lives on the inside of me. Neither let it be afraid. The Lord multiply the comfort of the Spirit in your life in Jesus' name. I come to thee now, and they say the discerning spirit, the dynamic spirit. And the defending spirit. The spirit of God comes in our lives. It builds a shelter. It builds an impenetrable wall between our spirit and Satan. And so all the darts and so all the arrows of Satan will not penetrate our heart. The shield will shake it up. And then is the dynamite, the dynamic spirit in our soul. That's what brings, while your flesh might be growing older and older, your spirit doesn't follow your body. That as your body is getting weaker as a human being, and your spirit says, your body is getting weaker. Me, spirit, you, your spirit, your heart. I'm going to follow and I'm going to become weaker. No, no, no. It will not happen in your life. Yeah. As your body is getting weaker, your spirit will be getting stronger. Yeah. will be moving higher. And the power and the vision and the passion for the Spirit of God to lead you higher, even as you grow older, it will happen. The dynamic spirit and the discerning spirit. Discerning spirit. We're looking at 1 Corinthians 
chapter 12. And I read from verse 7. It says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Look at verse 8. It says, But one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, and to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, the same Spirit that quickened Christ, the same Spirit that raised up Christ, the same Spirit that made Christ to do the perfect will of God all through his life, that same Spirit will come upon your life. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Look at verse 10. It says to another the walking of miracles and to another prophecy, to another the sunning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. What does that mean? How do we discern the spirit in ministry? You'll encounter number one, the human spirit. The people, the strong minded, and they have this human spirit. They can shout, they can bully, they can threaten. Human spirit. You have to discern. Just a human spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. And which one will prove stronger? The Holy Spirit in you or the human spirit in him or in her? Number two. There is the horrible, hateful spirit. That one comes from Satan. And sometimes in pretense, when it suits their purpose, they can say some good, good things. And here comes the man of God that show unto us the way of salvation. That's not human spirit. That's not Holy Spirit. The horrible spirit of the devil. And, and there she did many days shouting. She led a normal work and led a normal engagement following her after Paul and Silas. Here are the men of God that speak unto us the word of salvation. Well, she was the only person talking, but her spirit seen her saying that Paul and Silas was showing those spirits the way of salvation. That's not right. Paul was not preaching to evil spirits and showing them the way of salvation. And Paul was not in line, in agreement, in league with that spirit in that damsel, in that woman, in that lady saying, is showing unto us the way of salvation. And this continued many days until the crowd gathered. You must have discernment as to when to cast that devil out. Let her gather the people. Let her make the publicity. Let all the people come. If you disgrace the devil when the crowd was not there, what have you gained? But when all the crowd gathered, and that had been done many days, to discern the time, to discern the minute, the moment, and the hour when Paul will say, Come out of her, thou unclean spirit. And it came out that same very hour. That's discernment. He discerned it was not the Lord talking through her. How many people will meet and they have a good smile, they have a good nature, they have you know, everything you can think of, and then they're saying something that on the surface might appear true, but you have the discernment of spirit you'll have in Jesus' name. Many people have given up everything they have 
to a flattering tongue. Many people have given up everything they have and they have sold their ministry, they have sold their productivity, they have sold everything they have to the hands of the people that have another spirit, not the spirit of God, but the discerning spirit, the defending spirit, it will defend you. The dynamic spirit, it will make you remain dynamic for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at F now. F, we're looking at E, rather. We're looking at the empowering spirit. It will empower you. It will empower me. Oh, but you had the power. That day you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, we need the power more and more and more every day in our ministries in Jesus' name. The empowering spirit, the enabling spirit, the energizing spirit. The people who are weak is the spirit that comes to raise them up. Acts chapter 1, we're looking at verse 8. But he shall receive power. He shall receive power. He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He empowers us. He energizes us. He enables us. And from today, what you are not able to do in the past, you begin to do. But well, that means you're not just going to sit down and say, I didn't do that yesterday. I didn't do that last week. How can I do it now? Because the empowering spirit has come upon you. The energizing spirit has come upon you. Because the enabling spirit has come upon you. You will do what you have never done. You claim the fulfillment of a particular promise in the word that you have never claimed before in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Not before. Your saved that's still before the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You're sanctified that's still before the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You are enlightened that's before the Holy Ghost comes upon you. There are many things that happen in our lives, good, good things, but all those things are before the Holy Ghost comes upon our lives. But when you open the door, when you surrender yourself fully entirely to the Holy Spirit it says this will happen that never happened before amen, amen. amen. Peter can you tell me the high point of your life oh you see preacher I saw Jesus walking on the water and I said if that be you Lord let me come on the water. And Jesus said, come. And he left the boat and came on the water. He said that the high point of experience in my life. Now, Peter, if all you do is walking on the water, literally, you will not gather crowds. Who wants to come and see a person that is just walking on the water? But when you have power and you say, silver and gold, have I known? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Thousands will be born again because of that. And it says you receive this power, pure power, productive power. You receive this power, propelling power, productive power. You receive this power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Those disciples, apostles, they did the witnessing in Jerusalem. Those apostles and disciples, they did the witnessing in Judea. 
those apostles they heard revival broke out in Samaria and they chose Peter and John to go there. They saw the manifestation of that power in Samaria. Now, they stopped. The uttermost part of the earth, the gentle world. Peter, rise up and eat. And Peter said, no, no. Nothing like that ever entered my mouth. What the Lord had cleansed, that call not unclean. He was calling him to higher ground, uttermost part of the earth. Peter, second time, rise up and eat. I told you, Lord, even when I know the voice is coming from heaven, I forget the uttermost part. We're doing great in Jerusalem. We're doing good in Judea. And we're doing marvelously well in Samaria. Uttermost part of the earth, gentle world, no. You see, when we forget that the work is the work of the Lord, then we can say no to the Lord of the work. We we'll begin to direct and we never go anymore going further from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. And that is where the Spirit of God is taking you to. Amen. Good amen. amen. Better amen. amen. The best amen you ever said in your life. He will take us there. Amen. He will take me there. Amen. F, F is the fructifying spirit. The fructifying spirit. The spirit that makes us fruitful. You'll be fruitful. Amen. Every barrenness in the ministry work will be taken away from your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Fruit, I'll bear fruit. I will bear much fruit. I will bear more fruit. You bear fruit. You bear more fruit. You bear much fruit. And today, it will start. G, the guiding spirit. The guiding spirit. This is the spirit, the good spirit. Take not away from me your good spirit. He let them, he guided them by his spirit. John chapter 16, we're reading from verse 12. John 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. What? What are we hearing? They were in the original Bible school of Jesus Christ for three and a half years. And some people feel if they've gone to seminary, Bible college for three years, they say they've learned everything. Didn't we learn church history? Didn't we learn the survey of the Old Testament? Didn't we learn the survey of the New Testament? Didn't we learn the theology of Christ? Didn't we learn about the person, personality of the Holy Spirit? Didn't we learn eschatology, things to come? They say in their three-year Bible school, they learned everything. But Jesus said, you've been with me now three and a half years, and I have yet many things to say unto you. But he cannot bear them now. I pray after Bible school, we we'll still keep on learning. After seminary, we keep on learning. And after the school, the theological school of our denomination, we keep on learning in Jesus' name. And then in verse 13, in verse 13, it says, How be it when the spirit of truth is come? 
He will guide you into all truth. Amen. Yeah. He will guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear of me, that shall he speak, and I will show you things to come. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> H, the healing spirit. The healing spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12. We're reading from verse 9. And to another, by the same spirit, it says, the gift of healing. By the same spirit, the gift of healing. We don't earn it. It's a gift that the Holy Ghost gives when he enters in. In a greater measure, and the Spirit of God is allowed to walk and to move and to live and abide inside you. Healing will take place through your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. For these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. They will cast out devils. They will cast out devils. If there is a dog, a barking dog in the sitting room. And you know, there's a barking dog there. You can hear the barking of that dog. And you are afraid because you don't know what the dog will do to you. You will not cast that dog out. You will not take that dog out. You will not dispossess that God that dog, that fear has to come out of you. There are some believers that say, I don't want to even get near where they're casting out devils. I don't want that spirit to come out of them and jump into me. That means you need to have the fire inside you. If you have the fire inside you, no evil spirit will jump into fire. You are baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And even the devils who are pleading with Jesus, don't cast us out into that place of torment, into that fire yet. Let's have a time here. And if there's fire burning inside you, no evil spirit will jump into that fire. I have fire. I have, fire. I have fire. I have the fire of the Holy Ghost. The the They'll never come near you anymore in Jesus. In fact, in fact, in fact, have you been on the farm before when I was much, much younger? I followed my father to the farm. And, you know, sometimes we'll bring the wood and we'll bring all the grass and everything that we have caught and we'll put some either kerosene or whatever. We'll put it inside there and light the fire and the fire begins to burn and all those rats and rabbits and snakes and everything. What do they do when the fire begins to burn? They come from there, from there, from there. They are running out. And when the fire of the Holy Ghost comes in your heart, all those seeds that are dead that should not be there, they'll be running out. They'll be running out. They'll be running out. Until the pure fire of the Spirit will keep on burning and even burn every child. And you come out, you're free. You're full. You are powerful. Yeah. And they recognize you. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. Those spirits, they recognize you. They dare not come near. I said, they dare not come near. In my name, you cast out devils. In my name, you speak with new tongues. In my name, anything dear like serpent, you cast them away. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Your life is secured. There is immunity, protection in the life of the one that is filled, full of the Holy Ghost. And they shall lay their hands on the sick. 
What will happen? They will recover. What is the hand you are going to lay on the sick? I said, what is the hand you are going to lay on the sick? And they will recover. The Lord anoint all your hands afresh with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I is the interceding spirit. The interceding spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. I am weak, it will help your weakness. I said, it will help your weakness. Amen. I am fainting. It will help lift you up from fainting in Jesus' name. Amen. For we know not that what we should pray for, for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Ghost is praying for me. The Holy Ghost is praying for me. Am I weak? I'll be strong. Am I down? I'll be up. Am I fearful? I'll be fearless. Am I tired? I will try on. Your time has come. That you wait on the Lord and receive all that was spoken about of the Holy Spirit. And from today, you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. On Monday, we'll continue. Come and tell other people. Tuesday, we'll continue. Come. Tell other people, the church, the whole church. In this stage, in this nation, and all over the world, where we're connected, we're now becoming stronger and stronger. Amen. We're coming higher and higher. Amen. As we wait and receive the Spirit afresh more than ever before. Amen. And you will be the first partaker. Amen. What are you? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I am here. I will be the first partaker. I will be the first partaker of the anointing spirit, of the baptizing spirit, of the comforting spirit, of the discerning spirit, of the empowering spirit, of the fructifying spirit, of the guiding spirit, of the healing spirit, of the interceding spirit, be a partaker this morning.